you can't help who you fall in love with. Sometimes that person winds up being an American. And while Americans are great people, I was a former American myself, I love the American people. I think they're some of the kindest people on the planet. But being married to an American does come with some unique tax challenges because of the U.S.'s citizenship-based taxation regime. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about estate planning for a U.S. citizen spouse. But before we get into it, if you like the content we're putting out, please take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notified every time we drop a new video. If you want to get some international tax and wealth planning tips and strategies, maybe hear some of my war stories, you can subscribe to our email list and follow us on LinkedIn. A little disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. It is not tax, legal, or any other kind of advice. Everybody's situation is unique. You should get specific advice for your situation. So, let's get into it. Because of the U.S.'s citizenship-based taxation, all income earned by a U.S. citizen spouse and any income generated by assets owned by the U.S. spouse will be taxed. Furthermore, ownership in and income from certain types of assets are subject to punitive U.S. taxation. For example, ownership in a mutual fund or an investment fund or a privately held company. The income and assets will not only be taxed, but they also need to be declared to the U.S. government, which the foreign spouse often doesn't like. They don't understand why information about their financial affairs should be reported to the U.S. government. Who can blame them? Finally, there's a high tax compliance cost and risk of audit, even if you comply properly, right? So even if the U.S. citizen spouse is doing their taxes properly, there's still a high risk of audit. And even if they didn't do anything wrong and the audit results in no change, the process isn't very nice and it costs a lot of money. So to avoid this, a common strategy is that many couples choose to keep all of the assets in the name of the non-U.S. citizen spouse. This doesn't create any tax issues for the U.S. citizen spouse being supported by the non-citizen spouse because gifts received from non-U.S. citizens by U.S. citizens are tax-free. Now, if they exceed $100,000, they need to be reported, but they're tax-free. This isn't necessarily an optimal situation because it leaves the U.S. citizen spouse assetless, right? So what happens in the event of divorce? or death of the non-U.S. citizen spouse, or how about asset protection? If the, one, if the non-U.S. citizen spouse owns all the assets and they get sued or become liable for a debt, they could lose those assets. But let's talk about what happens if the non-citizen spouse that owns all the assets dies. So from a practical standpoint, this leaves the U.S. spouse in a very bad position because they might not have access to those assets. And the process of going through probate in order to gain control of those assets can be very lengthy and costly, which can leave the U.S. citizen spouse in a very bad position. Furthermore, depending on where they live, you also have forced airship laws to contend with, and the U.S. citizen spouse might not legally be able to get all of the assets that they were intended to get because of these forced airship rules. Now, again, Inheritances received by U.S. persons from non-U.S. persons are tax-free and just like gifts, they need to be reported if they exceed $100,000. Like I said, having the assets vested solely in the non-U.S. citizen spouse causes some problems for the U.S. citizen spouse when they die because they might not have control of those assets. There's forced airship rules. Gaining control of those assets are challenging. Okay. So let's assume the U.S. citizen spouse has now gained control of all these assets, right? They've gone through the probate process, uh, they've dealt with the forced heirship rules, and now the assets are vested in their name. Well, now that the assets are vested in the U.S. citizen spouse's name, all the income generated by the assets will be subject to U.S. income taxes, onerous reporting requirements, and draconian penalties for any sort of failure to comply, a lot of times even if it wasn't intentional. And when the U.S. surviving spouse dies, the inherited assets will be included in their estate, which potentially will be subject to U.S. tax. While the estate tax exclusion for a U.S. citizen is a little over $12 million, it's set to go down to around $6 million in 2025. Basically what that means is 
if the U.S. citizen spouse is worth less than $12 million or less than $6 million when it gets reduced, there's not going to be any tax. So now that the assets are vested in the U.S. surviving spouse's name, all the income generated by the assets will be subject to U.S. income taxes, onerous reporting requirements, and draconian penalties for failure to comply, a lot of times even if unintentionally. And when the U.S. surviving spouse dies, the inherited assets will be included in their worldwide estate and subject to U.S. estate taxes if the value of their estate exceeds the estate tax exclusion, which is currently a little over $12 billion, but it's set to go down to about $6 billion after 2025. And with COVID, massive deficits, and the Democrats after the rich, the risk of that estate tax exclusion being dramatically reduced even before 2025 is a risk. The best option is to engage in proper estate planning. I personally prefer either a foreign grantor trust or a foreign non-grantor trust. A foreign grantor trust is a favorite amongst international estate planners. And the main reason being is that the U.S. citizen spouse can receive distributions from the foreign grantor trust U.S. tax-free. Now, the way this works is the non-U.S. citizen spouse would set up a foreign trust naming themselves, their spouse, and anybody else they want as beneficiaries. But in order to qualify as a foreign grantor trust, it must contain a restriction that, the, that during the grantor's lifetime, so during the lifetime of the non-resident alien spouse that formed the trust, the distributions can only be made to the non-U.S. citizen spouse and to the U.S. citizen spouse. So they, this type of trust lacks flexibility because you can only distribute to the non-U.S. citizen spouse or the U.S. citizen spouse during the lifetime of the non-U.S. citizen spouse. So this would preclude you from making distributions, for example, to your children, other relatives, charities, or anybody else that you included as a beneficiary. Now, this also potentially creates some tax issues because it's only the two spouses that can receive distributions during the lifetime of the non-U.S. citizen spouse, the tax systems of many countries will look at those spouses as owning the assets of the trust and tax them on the income generated by those assets. So the foreign grantor trust does have a little bit of a tax risk in that the two spouses can be taxed on the trust's income even if they don't receive it. You also have an asset protection risk because, again, the two spouses could be considered as owning an interest in the trust and that could be considered an asset if they got sued or something like that. So the foreign grantor trust, the big advantage of it is the U.S. citizen spouse can receive distributions free of U.S. income taxation, but they lack flexibility because during the grantor's lifetime, distributions can only be made to the non-citizen spouse and the U.S. citizen spouse. You also potentially have the attribution of the tax to the spouses as well as an asset protection risk. For that reason, I usually prefer foreign non-grantor trusts because foreign non-grantor trusts allow distributions to be made to anybody who's included as a beneficiary so they can be completely discretionary which means that tax authorities or creditors would not be able to nail down a, a specific ownership interest in the trust. Additionally, you have the flexibility of distributing to a larger class of beneficiaries. The downside, of course, is that distributions received by the U.S. citizen spouse, income distributions would be subject to income tax. So every trust distribution, part of it, is the trust's capital or corpus, and part of it may be income if the trust has generated income. That income portion is going to be subject to tax. And if the trust has accumulated income in prior years, it could be subject to a very draconian throwback tax, which is essentially an interest charge on uh, undistributed profits retained and accumulated in the trust. Now, of course, there are planning techniques where you can oftentimes neutralize the throwback tax or, or greatly reduce its impact. Um, anyway, foreign grantor trusts and foreign non-grantor trusts are both great tools. They are both far better 
than the non-US citizen spouse just owning the assets in their name or even splitting the assets between the US citizen spouse and non-US citizen spouse. Uh, I think trusts are, are very valuable tools when doing estate planning for US citizen spouses. Of course, if you want a more in-depth analysis of the taxation of foreign trusts, there's a link to my video here where we talk about how foreign trusts are taxed. As always, this is the type of work we do for our clients all the time. If you have any questions, you need help setting up a foreign trust, we can absolutely help. Visit us on the web at www.esquiregroup.com or email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And of course, if you like the content we're putting out, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on new videos we put out. And if you want some international tax and wealth planning tips, strategies, and to hear some of my war stories, subscribe to our email list and follow us on LinkedIn. Thank you.